this is the syllabus for Math 100. Everybody here is here for Math Appreciation, right? Okay. I'll give you all a syllabus so you can write on it. The online ones are nice, but it's nice to be able to write on fuzzy to me. Does it look fuzzy to you? No, it's okay. It must be about contacts. So, I'm Mrs. Adsit. The best way to reach me is through email. So you can go ahead and email me. Uh, right before class is a good time to stop by my office, but I'm happy to meet with you other times. Just send me an email and we'll figure out a time that works. Our textbook is The Heart of Mathematics, so it looks like this. This is the photo that's on D2L, actually. But you'll be able to use it as an e-book, so unless you purchase an extra copy, you won't see the hardcover. And we'll look at how you see that on Wiley Plus in a few minutes. I thought I'd read the course description with you. It's actually from my from the author's syllabus and I like what he said and that's why I cut and paste it. Um, the author wrote that here we will consider some of the greatest ideas of humankind, ideas comparable to the works of Shakespeare, Plato, and Michelangelo. The great ideas we will explore here are within the realm of mathematics. What is mathematics? You probably thought mathematics was like numbers and algebra calculus, but there's more to that. Mathematics is an artistic endeavor which re requires both imagination and creativity. In this course, we will experience what mathematics is all about by delving into some of the beautiful and intriguing issues. So instead of just looking at the algebra like you might have seen in your high school courses or in other math courses taught here, we're going to look at some of the ideas that you don't get to see until you've gotten all of that calculus two, calculus three, um, differential equations, all that math usually has to come before you get to see these ideas. But we're going to bypass that algebra track and we're going to go right to the great ideas in mathematics. So the goal is here to attain a better understanding of some rich mathematical ideas, to build sharper skills for analyzing life issues that transcend mathematics, and we'll talk about those ideas most days to develop new perspectives and outlook at the way you view the world. So hopefully after you leave class this semester, you'll be thinking more about mathy things as you look at the world around you. The only prerequisites for this course are an open and curious mind and the willingness to put aside any preconceived prejudices or dislikes for mathematics. Very little mathematical background will be expected, and hopefully this course should be, for the most part, self-contained. So the little bits of algebra that we need, I'll be trying to teach you as we go along, and we'll practice in class to make sure you feel comfortable with it. There's also free tutoring available as well, if, and you're welcome to meet me outside of class if there's some parts that just aren't clicking for you. So to do well in this class, you would either attend class or watch it on D12. So I'm recording our lectures, and that way, if you're missing a day because your car won't start, like a couple people emailed me today, uh, you can watch the lecture on D12 content, and I'll show you where to find that. <coughs> and the online students, of course, have to watch on D12 content. 
So after that, you can read your textbook and do your homework on Wiley Plus, which we'll be looking at in a bit. Then you'll also be placing class activity work in the Dropbox on D2L. So we'll take a look at that at the end of class as well. Also, we'll have quizzes at the dates on the syllabus. Now we're off a little bit, so some things we'll have to change a tiny bit. Um, so let's work on writing down a few things right away that are before we look at the dates on the syllabus. Where did my notebook go? So most Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, you'll have a class activity, and it's usually just a couple sentences or taking a photo of something we do in class. So today, for a class activity, we'll be taking a photo and putting it in the Dropbox on, on D12 content. So assignments and class activities are due Sunday night. So this time you would put the class activity photo in the drop box anytime before Sunday night. I recommend doing it right away. Um, but just in case you don't, let's take out your phones and set an alarm, okay? So everybody take out your phone and set an alarm for Sunday nights for the whole semester to remind you, double check your drop box and double check Wiley Plus to see if you've missed any. So Sunday night, set an alarm, the homework on Wiley Plus, and the class activities will be due at 11.59 p.m. So set it sometime earlier so you can double check and make sure you don't miss anything. Now I will drop your three worst class activities and your three worst Wiley Plus assignments, but I hope that's because you really needed it because you were sick or something, not because you just forgot. Okay, so let's set the alarms to help with that. Not that I hope you get sick, but <laughs> it'd be nice not to miss those just because you forgot. Then the next class activity, I'll probably have to change due dates on. Because then for February 10th, you'll have your um, hardest class activity. Most of them are pretty easy. This one you have to read chapter 1. and answer what is your favorite what your author calls silly story and why so that if that doesn't sound hard you're right that's not hard it's just the one that's going to involve the most work most of our class activities we can do just right in class but this time you have to read chapter one, and I'll show you where to do that in your ebook. And tell what is your favorite silly story and why. And it doesn't have to be long. A sentence or two is plenty. Okay, maybe three. Right? You don't have to write paragraphs. Just a little bit to show me that you did pick out a silly story that you liked, and we're looking through the stories. What else we have here then? Now, there will also be more for February 10th. There will also be more for February 10th because, like I said, most Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays there's something to put in there. <coughs> I, just, I just haven't set up the due dates on that Dropbox because it depends on how far we get in class. If you have questions on a topic and we're going to spend time on a topic, I don't want to rush through it just to make a due date. So the due dates on those Dropboxes are still set from last semester and you can put things in them, but <coughs> but they may, may, I'll, I'll be putting due dates on as we reach the actual assignment. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday there's something usually. 
I do not take late class activities. That's another reason I just dropped three. Then if you're late for some reason, well, that'll be one that gets dropped. So back to looking at the syllabus. There is one change. We're going to change this February 22nd in bold to February 29th. So I was looking at the quiz due dates and I thought that February 29th would work better because otherwise there's this big gap and quiz two would have a lot more material. So we'll just get one more week on the first quiz and then we won't have quite such a big um, amount of material for the second quiz. That's why the syllabus says tentative on the very front because <laughs> tentative means we might change some things. Also on the syllabus, you see there's a column of things to bring to class. That's what the second column is. So at the top of the columns on the first page, it told that this is the week of, and this is what to bring to class, and this is the topic. So on 2.1, we'll need a ruler and a million items. So that will be Monday. So Monday, please bring a ruler and a million items. Now we're going to need these for the class activities that you're taking pictures of and putting on D12. So try to remind yourself to bring these things to class. Okay? So a million items. You can think about that and think about what you might be able to carry that's a million items. <laughs> Google's your friend because I'm going to ask how you know it's a million items. And then on, on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday we'll need a pine cone or a pineapple. So this weekend is supposed to be nice, and we are surrounded here on campus with trees with pine cones on them. So please pick one out this weekend and put it in your backpack to bring along Wednesday. So quiz one, the 29th. Quiz two, April 10th. You can see that you can bring a three by five card to your quiz. So as you're going through the material in class, if you come across something that's hard, you might make a note to yourself that this is something you'll want on your 3 by 5 card. Then quiz 3, May 15th. That's during the final exam schedule, and that's why there's two hours. It's not that that quiz is harder, it's just that since the registrar gives us two hours, we might as well have that available if you'd like. Um, none of the quizzes are None of the quizzes are cumulative, so they're, they're all pretty doable. Does anybody have any questions so far? So during quizzes, you should bring your ID with and put it on the table. If you leave during a quiz, you're done. I'll show you where the, the class videos are posted on D2L in a bit. Homework's done on Wiley Plus, so we'll look at that on, in, in a few minutes as well. We talked about class activities. There's free tutoring for this class. You can contact our tutor whose name is Jake by going to this website if you decide you'd like tutoring. Usually he sets up a study group too, so that would be nice for some of you. If you have technical difficulties, the help desk phone number is right here. They're very helpful. I call them, I've already called them today a couple times. <laughs> Let's see. At the bottom of the syllabus are the learning outcomes. Those are listed because if you transfer to another school, your teachers 
will want to decide where, what class to give credit for, and so they'll want to look at the learning outcomes to see how to match up this class with one of their classes. Any questions on the syllabus? Yeah, um, so let's see, it's Monday and then Friday. Does that mean that on Wednesday, you usually won't have any breaks? Um, so the syllabus gives a list of the order that we'll go through and the approximate dates. So we'll just start and go. And then once in a while, we'll skip something. Okay, but um, it's not in concrete because when you ask questions then we'll take longer if you don't have any questions we'll go faster does that answer your question yes. yeah. okay. any other questions okay then if you have your laptops we'll go on to set up that Wiley plus account and we might as well look at D2L while you're there too so you can actually do this on your smartphone as well so if you have your smartphone we'll go ahead and uh, first get to D2L so uh, D2L is on our UWGD homepage you sign in to D2L under DLE there. It says DLE. <coughs> Does anybody need me to help you sh find where D2L is? Okay. I hope everybody had a nice day Wednesday. I was so happy to have a day home. I never have days home hardly ever. So I was like, not going to give you any work to do. I thought about <laughs> giving you an assignment. I thought, nah, that's just, let's all just have a nice day. Okay, um, but down below that, welcome to class. In blue, it has the address for Wiley Plus. So we're going to go there. Let me make this larger. Okay, if for some reason you can't click on it, it's www.wileyplus.com forward slash go forward slash course divider. Now, before you click on that, let's grab the ID number that you're going to need right here. So let's copy the 689923. 689923 if you're doing this by hand. Okay. Let everybody get caught up here. So once you get to the Wiley Plus page, remove the words that say enter your six digit course ID and paste in the 689923 and click go the search button uh, and you should see my name here in our class so you can go ahead and set up an account it's a free two week account so it's not like it's going to ask for your credit card right now you'll get two weeks free and you can decide if you're in the right place before you actually pay any money in fact before you pay any money you can check the price directly from Wiley Plus and compare it to the bookstore price. I don't know which is better. The Wiley Plus one is better. You thought the Wiley Plus it's one? It's 90. It's 90 on Wiley Plus. How much is it in the bookstore? 110. 110? Okay. Thank you for letting yeah, us know. Did that come, did the one in the bookstore come bundled with a book? Did you notice? No, it was just the code. Just the code. Just, yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know. Okay. Uh, I'll wait till everybody gets an account set up. At the bookstore, did you see that you're supposed to buy a kit, a little, what do they call it there? It's bicycle cards. Well, the bicycle cards is just a deck of cards, so any deck of cards you have. And toolkit. Yeah, toolkit they call it. So any deck of cards you have is fine if you um, want to borrow a deck from a friend. The toolkit is pipe cleaners and um, straws, stir straws for coffee. So we take these pipe cleaners and these stir straws for coffee and we construct things with them, kind of like making our own set of Tinker Toys. Um, they're out at the bookstore when I last checked, so they'll get some more in, but you could certainly buy your own pipe cleaners from Hobby Lobby. The coffee straws are nicer than the regular straws because the, the pipe cleaners fit in better, 
but I've seen students use regular straws as well. In fact, I've seen students use spaghetti and a hot glue gun. <laughs> that, that worked. Um, okay, so everybody hopefully has their account set up. Anybody having difficulties getting their account set up? After you've made your account in the future, you'll go to wileyplus.com like I'm doing right now and click login. So I'm going to go to the student view, and you should have a page that like, looks like this. Does anybody have difficulty getting to this page? Okay. So your assignments are right here, and they're due Sunday nights. Uh, chapter 1 then, I'll change this due date. Instead of February 3rd, I'll make that February 10th. So that's how the due dates will work sometimes on Wiley Plus. I'll move them farther down if we didn't get that far. So this week we had snow days, we didn't get that far. You can look at chapter one and you maybe can answer the questions in chapter one. And you have four tries, so certainly you can give it a try. But if you have questions, I want you to be able to ask in class. So Monday you can ask questions in class about chapter one, and then it won't be due until February 10th, the night of February 10th. So that's your assignments. Um, these are approximate due dates. They may move further away. Do you have any questions? Yes. Can you show us how to like, rate the class? Yes. So that was the next thing. So under read, study, and practice, that's the next thing. The, the Wiley wants you to buy this downloadable e-textbook, and then, then you um, can work on it when you're offline. I don't know if it's worth the extra money or not. I guess it depends how hard it is for you to load the internet. But you can use the read, study, practice and go to chapter one. Uh, and here's the chapter opener. And then here's the silly stories that I was saying you should read. So you can see uh, which silly story you like the best, which one's most interesting to you. They're, none of them are very long. Dodgeball is the one we're going to do in class. Now they all pose a question that you have to answer, so try and answer them. I suppose it depends on your personality, what, how much time you'll give to trying to find the answer yourself. Because there are hints then, the next section is hints, and then there's finally answers. But it's, it's challenge yourself and see if you can get at least one of them figured out on your own. So you can pick a different chapter in the future then, okay? That's how that ebook works. I believe you can print pages too. Yeah, it looks like a printer version right there. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, how do we answer um, the silly story things that are like an assignment in D12? Yes. So let's look at that next. Why is my cursor dying? <coughs> that was weird. <laughs> So, my cursor died. I haven't had this happen at school before. Anybody have any ideas on that? <laughs> ah, there it goes. I was trying to move that black cursor. <laughs> I was trying to move this one right here. You were probably all saying, your cursor is fine. All right, anyway, let's go to uh, D2L. So, back on D2L, if you will.
So here's the drop box where you put your class activities. See the dates are not set yet. After class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I go back to my office and set the dates depending on what we got through. So today we'll get through dodgeball, so I'll set the date for this Sunday night, February 3rd. I don't have the same view as you do. Does yours show dates like this and, and the screen pretty much? Okay. Uh, and then you can click on it and presumably you can upload a picture because that's what you'll be doing for dodgeball today. You'll be taking a photo. So it's probably easier to do this part through your phone to upload it. And then this will be the one where you can enter um, a Word document. So this due date will be um, the 10th. So after class, then I set the due dates on these because whatever we get through, those are class activities that should be covered and entered into the job box. Do you have any questions? Well, let's see what else is on D2L. Let's go to content. So online students, this is the class activity materials, like the dodgeball page. So here I printed these out and brought them to class, but online students can print them out here. The syllabus for face-to-face -face and online students you'll see is the same, except face-to-face -face students can take their quizzes with me, so they don't need any directions on how to arrange for a proctor. Online students, you will look at this syllabus and it will tell you how to arrange for a proctor. Here's the class videos. I'll be loading videos here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoon. If you do want to work ahead, you can look at most of the sections that we cover on this other last semester's videos. These 2019 videos require downloading um, video VLC video player. So here's a link to do that. I had the help, that's why I called the help desk today. I'm like, my MP4 players, my MP4 files are too big, what do I do? So I have to put them in this format. Okay, so let's see what else. Proctor guidelines for online students. These all say a tentative review. They're where the reviews for the quizzes will go, but they still say a tentative because they're from last semester. I'll update them for this semester so they're more particular to the quiz you'll take this semester. After that, it won't say tentative anymore. Here's some tips on how to study for a math class. It's a very good website. The grade calculator I'll put up after either quiz one or quiz two where you can go in there and put in what you hope to get for future quizzes and see what kind of grade that would give you. Some supplemental material that we might look at on occasion. <coughs> This, this directions to record and upload a research project doesn't show up on yours because you don't have to do a research project this semester. Last semester I required one. So I don't think you need anything else on there. Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. And my question for you is, why should we study mathematics? We have a math appreciation class. And in fact, the university has requirements for math competency. We don't have a social studies appreciation class that's required. We don't have psychology required. Why, why do we have math required? Why should we study mathematics? Does anybody have any ideas on that? Requirements going to be needed for any job, but maybe just having this appreciation course then also can 
spark an interest to someone, go with them to something like engineering or something more advanced math. That's true. So you have a several topics, there are several ideas there. You have that math is a universal language. In fact, uh, they send mathematics out. How, how many of you know what the Pythagorean theorem is? Yeah. Okay, so that's one of the things that is etched in titanium and sent out on space probes for people looking for intelligent life because it's a universal language and they feel like that could communicate like a Rosetta Stone would. I believe you also mentioned that you might need it in work. We had a person who did drywall for us once and he was so likable and I kept asking my husband, why can't this person get a job like a regular job because he's just working for us on the side. He didn't really have a job. Um, and he said, because he can't do fractions. You know, so it's just, you do need, you do need to know math. Um, what else did you say? You said it might spark an interest and yeah. make you interested in other courses. In science, you need math basically anywhere. So this would lead to perhaps being in some, interested in some of the science classes classes like um, engineering or computer science or um, statistics. Good. These are all good ideas. Anybody have any other ideas? Why study math? Yeah. Well, those are very good ideas. So I um, I think I'll just go to another idea that usually students don't think of. The reason that I've always loved to study math is because I'm a Christian, and to me the studying the math points to the designer of the universe. So I brought some articles that say that better than I can. This is an article called Science Finds God. And I blew up, I blew up one of the sections so that I could read it more easily to you. Humans invent abstract mathematics, basically making it up out of their imaginations, yet math magically turns out to describe the world. Greek mathematicians divided the circumference of a circle by its diameter, for example, and got the number pi. How many of you have heard of pi? Pi, anybody? Pi, okay. So pi turns up in equations that describe subatomic particles, light, and other quantities that have no obvious connections to circles. In fact, we'll see one of those strange occurrences later on in the semester. This points, says Polkinghorne, to a very deep fact about the nature of the universe, namely that our minds which invent mathematics conform to the reality of the cosmos. We are somehow tuned into its truths. Since pure thought can penetrate the universe's mysteries, this seems to be telling us that something about human consciousness is harmonious with the mind of God, says Carl Fied, a <coughs> cancer biologist at Yeshiva University in New York in a Talmud, Talmudic study. Uh, that Polkinghorne that's quoted earlier was John Polkinghorne. He served for 25 years as a professor of mathematical physics at Cambridge. He actually um, was a fellow of the Royal Society. One of the things that he said about about mathematics resonated with me. He said um, at the very bottom of the page here, one of the fascinating things about the physical world is that its fundamental structure seems always to be expressed in beautiful mathematics. To me that suggests that there is a mind behind the structure of the world and that our minds are somehow tuned to that mind. And he puts a capital mind because he's thinking of God. And that's what I've loved about math. To me, it just points to a beautiful design made by someone who loves us and thought of us when that design was made. Well, let's go ahead and take a look then at some mathematics today. <coughs> we'll take a look at this dodgeball. I actually had a student, an online student, look at the class activities and said, saw that you had to drop, put a picture of yourself playing dodgeball in the drop box and so they dropped the course because they didn't want to go play dodgeball but it's not it's not that kind of dodgeball I don't like getting hit by balls playing dodgeball either this dodgeball is a little different this dodgeball 
is on a pad of paper. That's more my kind of game, okay? <laughs> so, in this dodgeball, I'm, I'm going to have you play, okay? You're going to be player one at times, and you're going to be player two at times. So, what happens is, player one can have that whole top board, but player two's only gets one square for their turn. So for player one's turn, they can put X's and O's, and make that a little tiny bit smaller, they can put X's and O's across however they want. See, so sometimes that's the text that I send to my husband. <laughs> okay, but player two only gets one box. Okay. Uh, so player two makes the X or O in their box, and then player one does theirs. X's or O's across, and then player two does theirs, and we go on like that. Player one making a whole row, and player two just making one box. I'm going to be kind of lazy on this one. Okay, so player one does a whole row, and player two just gets one box. And then the way that you tell if you win, and I always have to look this up, because otherwise I get it backwards. Player one wins if any of his rows matches exactly player two's row. So player one wants a match. Okay, so that's how player one is going to win, if there's a match. Player two wins if they dodge a match. <coughs> In other words, player two dodges a match. So that's why it's called dodgeball. So player one wants a match. Player two wins if there is no match. Um, who won on this game? Is there a match? <coughs> That's which one? Which row? Two. 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 Okay, so player row two. Okay, so player one wins. Because there's a match. So player one has to go first, and then player two is trying to uh, not match. Player one is trying to match. Got it? Got it. Okay, so I'm going to hand these out and play multiple times with. Um, we'll have to get in pairs, so just pair, 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 okay. Um, starting, can you, in the second row, work with the person behind you in the third row, please, and then you can go pair. Oh, then I'm going to have you. Okay. Well, well, we'll get in pairs, and I'll help you find a match if, if there's no one in your row. So you play together on the same board, okay? Online students, you should print this off and find someone to play this with. Come back, online students, to see what the strategy is.
Look at infinity later. I think it could be like both places, both chances. Because if you're player two, you can watch what they're doing in order what you're trying to do. And then, like, at the very end, like, you did, you did zero, and I could have done that. So, like, I could have done that. That's why I wanted to do that. So, I'm going to do that. I don't think we have to. Which I see. And then, like, I'm going to do that. Oh, you have a strategy to play a few. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. 
Okay. All right. Well, let's talk together about this. Okay. Who thinks there's a winning strategy? And who can find? Uh, I'm going to have someone who thinks there's a winning strategy for player one tell me what's right for player one, and someone who thinks there's a winning strategy for player two to tell me what's right for player two. Okay. So who do we have for player one willing to go with a winning strategy for player one? Well, how about for player two? Now when I walked around, there were some... Okay, you feel like you got a booty strategy for player two? Yeah, you just okay. write the opposite of what player one writes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, okay, so you have a plan. Okay. Yeah. All right, is there anyone willing to be player one? Okay, how about um, even if you don't think you're going to win with someone be player one? You'll be, who's that? You, okay, you'll be player one. Okay, so tell me what's your right player one. X. O. X. X. O. O. Okay, thank you. And player two? O. Okay. Okay, I'll get this on the screen there. Okay, player one. O. X. O. X. X. O. Okay, player two? Another O. Another O. Okay, player one. Oh, oh. Oh. X, X, O. Okay. Player X. X. Player one? Oh, oh, X. <laughs> X. Oh, oh. Okay. So I see what, I can see what player, player one is doing. You're like getting these, right? Because you're like, those are already there. Okay. All right. Player oh. two? Oh. <laughs> okay. Player one? Oh, oh, X, X. I mean, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, what is this? X. X. Oh, oh, you did say X. That's right. Okay. I mean, O. X. Okay. Player two? Um, <laughs> why do, uh, I will do an X. An X. Okay. O, O. O, O. X, O. X. Okay, I can figure that out now. Okay, what did you want next? Oh. Oh? All right. And what is? I will pick an X. An X. Okay. So who won this time? Player two. Player two, because there's no match. Okay. Well, thank you for that demonstration and for participating, even though you didn't, you felt, because you were working together, so you knew sh player two had a winning strategy, right? Can you describe your winning strategy, please? How did you pick an O here? Um, well, he put up the whole thing, and I decided to go against the opposite, because towards the end, if you pick the opposite, then right the last one, no matter what they pick, you pick the opposite. So you picked the O as the opposite of this one? Yes. So you were just looking... Like then you pick this O as the opposite of this one? Yes, so I looked like on the diagonal. So you looked on the diagonal. Because then player two's board won't match row one because it has the opposite first box. And player two's board won't match row two because it had the opposite of the second box. It won't match row three because it has the opposite of the third box. It won't match row four because in the fourth box it's opposite. Won't match fifth box because in the fifth box it's opposite, and it won't match sixth box because the sixth one is opposite. So you just focused on the diagonal, and you knew if you had that one box opposite, that it would not be the same as row two. That that is exactly right. So that's very good. And I heard a couple of you. Who else had that strategy? I heard a few of you getting that strategy. Yeah, good. That's very good. Nobody got that in the first class. So your class, you can pat yourselves on the back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so you have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget, get this picture uploaded, and I'll see, see how things are looking on chat on Quiz One. You can see it on Monday. By the way, this is for Infinity. We'll come back to this when we see Infinity. <laughs> Thank you.